Today I want to show you our basic chicken coop. This was a DIY build that we did last spring for our six girls. We have a mono slope roof which leans to the back and that allows for all of the water runoff to go to the back. It does, there is no human access or chicken access at the back so that prevents water, reduces the amount of water that might get into the egg door or to prevent the chickens from coming out if the water is pouring down on them. It also allows us to create a water catchment system. We don't have it installed yet but simply putting some uh, eaves troughing on the back, we can have a water catchment system. The roof is made from eight foot sheets of, uh, of just standard steel roofing. The coop itself is on a raised platform, which is four by eight, and it's just two by fours. Uh, we've reinforced the two by fours on the corner to give it more support. It is not dug into the ground, but this thing is a beast. It's not going anywhere. And this allows us at some point, if we need to, we might be able to come in and lift it with a pallet forks. Uh, we have the window on the front is just a reclaimed window. It is uh, east facing, so all winter long, the girls get the light. As soon as it's up in the morning, Morning, they're getting sunlight in their window or daylight in their window. The base, I said, was 4 by 8 The front is also 4 by 8 And then the back is, at the back, the low angle is 2 by 8 You know, you've got some space to move around in there. And that allowed the end panels to be made from a single sheet of plywood to make both ends. We have our egg door. And we've got the nesting box built inside. It's 100% removable, so we can take that out and redesign that if we want to. The only flaw that Dan has found in this is he would rather have the hinges for this door on the top rather than on the bottom. And there's no cover over this groove here, and he would rather see that covered so there's less chance of water trickling in. Do we have any eggs this morning, girls? Oh, we got somebody in the box. I think it's Penny. She's been in there for about an hour. <laughs> When we were building this, we also cut some triangle spaces at the top to allow for airflow. There is um, con hardware cloth, construction cloth in there, and uh, this panel can come out completely for the summertime, or we can close it up to reduce the draft, but still allow ventilation in the winter. We have some modified some draft and wind control. When we had some really drifting snow, we were having some trouble, so we've sealed that up to still allow moisture out, but it prevented the snow from going in. We also had some plastic along this track to reduce drafts even further. We do need to go in and modify that, but that's coming with the new season. Sometimes you just have to live with it for a year to find out what works and what doesn't. This was made from over 50% reclaimed wood. This, uh, there's a chicken pecking at my butt. This is our Lala. She has always had a bit of a tilt to her head. We think she's blind in one eye. These two girls that are right close to me, they were handled the most as they were tiny chicks. And uh, Rosie and Lala are our favorites out of all of that. They're, they're still great birds. These chickens are not a problem at all. And someone else is pecking at my butt. <laughs> Here on one end, we have the chicken door. Uh, we can modify that to be for an automatic door if we want to. We just haven't gotten around to it. When we first built this ramp, we had the cleats placed much further apart, and we found that this works much better for the chickens. They're not afraid of it anymore. And someone is quite talkative this morning. Here on the inside of the run, I've put on two containers. I've just screwed, cut, I've just drilled holes through the plastic and wired these containers on. One is the bottom of a juice jug and one is a sour cream container. One has the granite grit and one has eggshells. When we were constructing this, I made a point of spacing these bars here apart wide enough to crawl through. So if the chicken was in the corner in distress or laid eggs way there, way back there, I was able to crawl through and get at them part of the design. We used a very manual design for the locking system because we wanted to make sure it was raccoon proof. The human door is quite large and uh, this, this shelf, this height here, is perfect for pulling a wheelbarrow up. Oh, and look it, she finally laid that egg. Oh, there's the egg. Thank you, Penny. It's still warm. This is our egg nesting boxes. You can see here it is completely separate 
from the rest of the uh, the coop. It can come out completely. Um, and uh, it's, there's just three of them. There's six birds. That's plenty of boxes. They do like to play up on top now and again and make a mess, as chickens do. Our roosting bar runs from the back wall over to the end wall. You should leave a foot of roosting space per bird. And there's plenty of space here. They all tend to crowd together in about eight inches each instead of 12, but uh, that's all right. Um, any modifications we make for more birds will include changing that roosting bar. Are you ready for your close-up, Rosie? No? We use a deep litter method of pine shavings for our girls. One bale of shavings has, has given us Oh, maybe two or three inches. As they dirty it, you just put in more shavings and stir it up and it dries things out beautifully. Oh, see, she is ready for her close-up. Hey, Rosie. The interior uh, is also made of reclaimed wood. It is some just some boards that we had laying around. Uh, this is just shiplap that was I found on the property when we moved in, so I've uh, just use that and uh, it works. It keeps the insulation in place, protects the girl, protects the insulation from the girls pecking at it. Oh, over there in the corner, just behind the chicken, you might be able to see an electrical cord. We just have an extension cord that we have wrapped on the outside of the building. In the winter, we brought in a brooder plate and just set it in here. It brought the temperature up an extra five degrees above what it was. Um, the, the, the girls generally keep it about seven degrees warmer, but that added an additional five. When it was minus 40 outside, it sure was nice to know that they were sitting at only <laughs> minus 32 instead. Here on the front, I've just slid in a board loosely, and that is to hold the shavings back. When this coop was originally designed, the run was following the same lines as the coop does, but those, pl those plans got modified, and uh, now we're cursing. So this run is only four feet high, and it is really challenging to get in there and fill the feeder, or change the, the dog dish with treats or to fill anything, take care of anything. My husband really struggles with the height of this. He's six foot four, so uh, it's quite a bit for him to duck down and, and get in there. The modifications that are coming is we're going to duplicate the coop itself. The new run will be the full width of these two coops side by side and then 16 feet outward from the coops plus the four feet under, that'll make it 20 feet long and 16 feet wide. Uh, we've just got uh, step-in posts here and deer fencing and it does pretty good to contain these girls. Every now and again they will have an adventure and one of them will fly over or uh, climb under and we'll have runners and uh, because we're home we can watch them for that. Our new run will be completely covered and we may add an additional run such as this one outside of that to give them you know outdoor playtime. We're excited to try this out. Let's see how it goes.